Hello everyone and welcome to the August 14th meeting of the Women Product Toastmasters Club. Today I'll be your Sergeant at Arms. My name is Amy Kirkland and today our theme is emotional intelligence. Emotion, emotional intelligence is a really important characteristic for us as product leaders and I'm excited to hear about everyone's um, info on emotional intelligence today. At this time, I'd like to introduce our president and today's Toastmaster, Rosie Hernandez. Uh, thank you. I wanna cover biz some club business before we get into the rest of the agenda. Um, first off, we are going to be having a session where we'd like for hiring managers to speak. Um, it doesn't have to be based on your company. It could just be your personal experiences as a hiring manager. If you're interested, uh, reach out to Marguerite. Um, you're also all invited to attend the leadership meetings that take place on the second Wednesday of the month. If you're interested, just let us know and we can send you the invite to that. Um, we're also looking for an SSA substitute for next meeting, which is going to be August 28th. Um, please let me know if you're interested in that. Um, and then exciting news about the vote counter position or the vote counter role. Um, we're gonna test it out this meeting, but we think we might be able to um, remove that role in future meetings via by using Zoom as an alternative to have us calculate our vote. So that's exciting news. Um, for today, we do need a vote counter and we do have one on board. So thank you. Um, and then there will be a Q&A following today's meeting. Um, so please stay, stay on if you're able to answer questions and also guests if you have any questions for us about joining or just Toastmaster questions in general. And then lastly, I do wanna open up the floor for any guests that might be joining us today. Um, if you haven't already, please add guest in front of your name. But let me see, I think it's just, Members, is anyone seeing any guests? Nope. All right, cool. Okay, and with that, I'll um, jump into the next section, which is introducing the Toastmaster of the day. Um, that'll be me. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and start off with um, my intro. So welcome everyone. It's a privilege to introduce the theme of the day. Today's theme of the day is emotional intelligence. With the change to hybrid and remote work, having strong emotional intelligence has become crucial for both day-to-day -day interactions in the workplace and for product development. I'd like you to close your eyes and think about a time where you had to discern how someone was feeling based on their verbal or nonverbal communication. Perhaps you noticed someone was nervous because they were speaking at a fast pace or fidgeting with their hands like I'm doing now. Or maybe you may have noticed that someone was mad or frustrated because they furrowed their forehead and raised their tone. In either case, you probably used your understanding of their emotion to adjust your own tone and facial expressions to either match the positive conversation or to influence the person to feel a different emotion such as calm or happiness. Um, Harvard Business Review or Harvard Business School defines emotional intelligence as one, the ability to understand and manage your own emotions, and two, the ability to recognize and influence the emotions of those around you. It sounds like a skill that we could really lean into to understand user pain points, motivate our own teams, or to simply help us to become more self-aware of our own emotions. Today, you'll learn more about emotional intelligence through our prepared speeches and our impromptu table topics. With that, I'd like to introduce our team, starting off with our general evaluator, Kashmira, you have the floor. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. I will be the evaluator of the day and my um, job, main job is to review and um, assess the meeting from the time people arrive to the end of the program's educational component and then in the end to report my findings. Um, it will highlight how members have performed in the meeting roles, including preparation, organization, timeliness, enthusiasm, and carrying out the duties um, of that particular role. Um, and my evaluation team today is um, the first um, 
person of the first role is of the grammarian and this is uh, Sam Doctor. Sam, can you introduce yourself and your role, please? Thank you, uh, general evaluator, fellow Toastmasters. I'm the grammarian for this meeting. So I'll be keeping an eye out for good uses of grammar as well as potential errors. And the word of the day is entrust. Entrust to confer a trust upon someone and or to commit to another with confidence. I entrust all of you to lead a great meeting today. Thank you. Back to you, general evaluator. Thank you, Sam. My next team member is the timer, Jennifer Ginsberg. Um, over to you, Jennifer. Hi, thank you for that welcome. Um, welcome everyone. As you know, when we're working on our day-to-day -day meetings and having speeches, it's important for us to stay on time, be on time, and meet those um, time boxes that we're given to make either a speech or um, conduct a meeting. So as a timer, I will be keeping time for speeches, evaluations, and table topics. For spe table topic speakers, you will have no more than two minutes. Um, those giving speeches for icebreakers, I don't think we have any icebreakers today. Nope. Um, for regular speeches, it's five to seven minutes in length. I'll be giving a time card, a green card, a yellow card, and then the red card it essentially means that your time is up. Um, back to you. Thank you, Jennifer. My next team member is the uh, counter, and that is Marguerite. Over to you, Marguerite. Uh, thank you, Kashmir. And hello, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Uh, the purpose of the ah uh, counter is to know words and sounds that are used as fillers or overused. Uh, so words like well, but, and so, and filler words like ah, uh, um, uh. And I will, at the end of the meeting, I will report the number of times each speaker used these expressions. Well, thank you. Back to you. Madam General Evaluator. Thank you. My next team member are members rather are the evaluators for the speeches. And the first evaluator for um, Srimai's speech is Amy. Amy, over to you. Um, I guess I don't know yeah. if Amy got yeah, sorry. Amy. Hi, uh, yeah, today I will be one of the evaluators. So I'll be evaluating um, Srimai's speech. Uh, Lori will be the other evaluator who will be evaluating Tiffany's speech. And we will be um, reviewing, or reviewing and presenting our evaluations um, after the speeches. Thank Thanks. you, Amy. And that was the evaluation team. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you. Muted again. Uh, thank you, Kashmira. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump, take us into our next section, which is the prepared speeches. Uh, to start, we have Shirmai, and let me pull up her intro. Um, Shirmai has eight years of experience in SRE and customer service, and currently is the co-founder of a startup called PriceOps. Currently moved to India and is excited to begin her entrepreneurial journey. Awesome. I'm so sorry for butchering your intro. <laughs> um, but you have the floor now. All right. Thank you, Madam Toastmasters. And hello, everyone. Good morning. So I am here to give my speech on a topic that's very dear to me, emotional intelligence. Now, let me start off by asking you all a question. Um, have you ever looked at people who you think are successful in your day-to-day -day life? It could be your work, your personal relationships, and have you ever wondered what makes them tick and how you think they've all got it figured out? Like what's the predictor for success in these people? So I, I'd love to know your answers in the comments and I go on with my speech, but I, as a child, definitely wondered looking at uh, the people in my life, my role models, my idols, and a, a, everybody who I would interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. I used to think, what is a predictor of success? Is it money? Is it intelligence? Is it education or experience? 
what predicts a per person's ability to succeed in life? So I wanted to seek an answer to this question as a child, but you know, with the limited capabilities to understand concepts when you're a child, it just, this, the question just stayed with me as I was growing up. Then I bumped into this book called Emotional Intelligence 2.0, which was a game changer for me. So it talks about emotional intelligence. Turns out uh, studies show that not education, not intelligence, not money or uh, intellectual horsepower that contribute to the person's ability to succeed. It turns out there's another factor called emotional intelligence that is responsible for determining how a person succeeds in his or her life. So what is emotional intelligence? Emotional intelligence is the ability for you to recognize and understand your emotions and as well as the people's uh, emotions and use and the ability to use this awareness to manage your relationships, how you react to situations, how you navigate social complexities in your life, and in general, better um, uh, deal with situations in your life. So it turns out it's not as a common sense knowledge as it is right now. It wasn't that known, people were not aware of this factor called emotional intelligence. They were, they were thinking intelligence quotient or IQ, which is, the, um, which is how you quantify your intelligence is a factor that is responsible for a person succeeding. Well, intelligence or intelligent quotient is the ability for you to learn things is definitely an important skill. It turns out many people with average IQ skills also turned out to be successful where they possessed high level of emotional intelligence. So let's dive a little deep into it. I'd like to share a personal experience of mine. So when I reached out to a manager of mine to give me some feedback, he gave me, he was very genuine and he told me what worked and he told me what didn't work. Now that triggered an emotional reaction in me when, he, when my manager pointed out my mistakes. I became defensive and I told him how hard I worked to be, to be where I am and I didn't appreciate him talking that way. So I went back home, we had this conversation, it was done, that I was thinking, why did I react the way I did? When I was the one who asked my manager to give me genuine feedback, that I realized that I got defensive when somebody was trying to uh, point out something negative of, or about me. So my emotions took made the better of me and made me react the way I did instead of taking it positively and thinking about why my manager told me what I need to improve and then working on it rationally. Then I figured out there has to be something about dealing with your emotions and turns out more awareness of emotional intelligence is what gives you that command on how you behave in certain situations, how you take, how you make the better of your emotions and not let them get the better of you. So emotional intelligence essentially has, how, how do you develop emotional intelligence? Now that we've established you need emotional intelligence to succeed more than your IQ, I, Remember, I'm not saying IQ is not important. And if you, if a person has both IQ and EQ, it's going to be a deadly combo. But EQ is more important than IQ in certain situations. And let me tell you, how can we improve our emotional quotient? Uh, it is very, luckily, it's very flexible skill and you can definitely improve. It basically has four components to it which can be categorized into two comp competencies. One is personal competency and second one is social competency. So personal competency is for you to be aware of your emotions, what makes you tick and what triggers you for an emotion. Once you understand that you're better prepared in situations to react accordingly and not get the negative emotions like anger, greed or jealousy or anything of that sort to get the better of you. And the second part of the personal competence is how you react to the emotions. As a wise man once said, 
the what you feel is not under your control it's perfectly human to feel all the emotions but how you react to your emotions it what differentiates a wise person from a not so wise person and the second competency is social competency the the second side of the coin to emotional intelligence is also being aware of how the people are uh, feeling how people's emotions are um, showing in the room you can't always be involved in your own emotions to not bother about how other people are thinking and you know just uh, for example you cannot be you could not walk into a room where everybody is sad and make a joke about it so that's not having awareness of how people are uh, how people's emotional state is so that's very another critical point to have uh, this awareness of other people around you and the last part to it is how you manage your relationships so let me tell you if you are self aware if you know how to react properly to your emotions and if you know if you are aware of other people's feelings the last piece is the easiest to manage which is your relationship and how the way you react in social context so improving all those four skills will improve your emotional intelligence quotient and it will add uh, um it it will uh, it will improve your chances to succeed in life i'm going to put the reference of the book in the comment and as um suggested in the book i highly recommend everybody to read it not once but twice if not more thank you everybody Perfect. Um, we will now open it up for questions. Um, any questions? I have a question. What are some things you do to help you get into a better like headspace or mindset if you do go out seeking for a critical or more what you anticipate will be more negative feedback? Uh, yeah, great question, Tiffany, and thank you for asking. So, um, one thing that I have been doing since a few years, and it helps me get clarity, is journaling. So, whenever I feel, you know, kind of chaotic in my mind, I just start writing. Mind you, it's not ordered; it's just a brain dump, and I also give a heading that it's a brain dump. So, I just write everything down in the order that my brain is telling me. and once i write it believe it or not i get a lot of clarity i um see where i am not thinking logically it's almost like talking to a person and you know the person won't judge you at all because it's, it's a piece of paper but it relieves a lot of load off of me and then helps me think clearly awesome i definitely like that response um any other questions I guess I have one. Um, if you could give us some more or visibility into how you handle your, how you use um, emotional intelligence when working with maybe like a tough ex-fan partner or when you have a blocker with another team, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I was working in site reliability engineering, which was uh, production support. So um, and also customer service. Like most of the times. we get involved because things break so it's not a pretty situation uh so whenever we get breaked and we are in this customer calls like this is a classic examples of customers their emotions speak something is not working and you need it fixed so they they they're not yeah it, it's it's tough for them when they're on the call and they can't see you work on it and they just want the issue to be fixed it's easy to get carried away and uh, the the negativity to spread so i just try to uh, segregate the emotions from uh, the logic part um, and i i've been i i wanted to mention i've been practicing meditation for quite some time now and i think it's helped me a lot in my personal life um so yeah basically when i'm in a tough situation i try to tell uh, calm myself down and tell it's just an emotion that's taking over i'll let it pass and then think so i think the another great book that helped me was thinking fast and thinking slow so 
I pause for a moment before reacting. And then I think that helps most of the times. Perfect. Yeah, I definitely recommend that book. It has helped a bit. Um, perfect. Well, with that, thank you so much for your speech today. I'm going to now introduce our second speaker of the day, our second prepared speaker, Tiffany. Tiffany is the secretary of our club and the first PM in training at a B2B supply chain startup. She is excited to share a part of her journey in improving her self-understanding in a speech titled Unlocking Motivation by Understanding Your Motivation Style. And Tiffany, you now have the floor. Thank you so much, Madam Toastmaster, and welcome, fellow Toastmasters. Raise your hand if you have ever struggled to stay motivated for a project spanning over multiple months. Keep your hand up if you have ever beaten yourself up for not being ambitious enough or having even been told that you're too ambitious. And finally, keep your hand up if you have ever observed a teammate struggle to stay motivated. Today, I will share Today, I will share my journey of learning about motivational styles and how I use this knowledge in my day-to-day -day product management work. To kick things off, let's first understand how motivation ties back to today's theme of emotional intelligence. According to Daniel Goleman, an American psychologist who helped to popularize EQ, motivation is one of the five key elements of EQ. Motivation is defined as the ability to work consistently towards goals. My mind was blown when I learned about different motivational styles from Ayurveda or traditional Indian medicine. Ayurveda is based on the concept of a doshic balance, which is the balance of the three major patterns that govern our physical characteristics and our mind. Each of us has a unique cognitive fingerprint and different folks have different kinds of fingerprints. Ayurveda postulates three doshas. The first dosha is vata or wind, which points to a dynamic motivation. The vata mind tends to be all over the place. They get very excited about one thing one day and lose interest in it as soon as the next day. They might even say they lack follow through. When vatas are under stress, they tend to respond with anxiety. Second, pitta or fire, which points to a driven motivation. In North America, we tend to think of pitta style motivation as the default manifestation of motivation. You wake up, you do your work, you go to bed, rinse and repeat the next day. Pittas tend to be ambitious, driven, and fiery. When pittas are under stress, they tend to respond with anger. Third, and last but not least, kapha, earth or water, which points to a resilient motivation. Kapha style motivation is like a marathon, low acceleration to start and high top speed. Kappas tend to beat themselves up for not being faster or not learning something new quickly enough. When kappas are under stress, they tend to respond with depression. Now that you have an idea of how a vata, pitta, or kappa dominant person behaves, I will share two scenarios in my day-to-day -day life as a PM and how I approach them with my own kappa vata motivational style. Scenario number one, how I start my week. Before I dive into work on Monday morning, on Sunday afternoon or evening, I identify my top three to five priorities for the upcoming week and block time on my calendar to work on those. This way I have a sense of structure and focus already set out for the next five days, which really satisfies my kappa mind. At the same time, this leaves sufficient time for me to do a variety a variety of other important work, such as make sure my team and stakeholders are aligned on goals, priorities, and work in progress, speak with sales, professional services, and customer support to keep a pulse on what our customers and prospects are saying, and speak with development in case there are any questions about requirements or if a timeline or scope needs to be adjusted and communicated throughout the rest of the organization. 
I love that no two days of mine are identical, which keeps my Vato mind satisfied. Scenario number two is cross is cross functional communication at multiple levels throughout the week. My Kafa mind maintains the big picture in the background while discussing various details down in the weeds with my teammates, which taps more into my Vata mind as we move between related but different topics. This lets us ensure we understand the short term and long term implications of decisions we are making now such as what are the customer or business implications of moving a certain direction that we had not thought of. As for discussions with my executive level stakeholders, I have observed that they operate at a much different time horizon than the rest of the organization. Thus, in discussions with them, when a stakeholder takes us a bit too far into the future, I ground the conversation back to what we are currently working on from the roadmap. I'm super grateful for my stakeholders for entrusting me with our roadmap and for bringing value to our customers' lives. And I take my responsibility in ensuring we as an organization are all aligned in our vision and its execution very seriously. Now, I admit that I don't fully entrust Ayurveda as a scientifically robust model to perfectly understand myself and others. However, I do treat it strictly as a simple three-dimensional model through which I can establish a foundation to understand what motivates myself and the folks I work with. For example, as I mentioned earlier, even though I am by Doshik Kapha Vata, I still have my Pitta moments. My fiery nature tends to manifest itself when my Kapha mind has sustained too many neurotic emotions for a prolonged period of time, which increases my chances of outbursts due to frustration or even pent up anger. There are many models that simplify the lens through which we can better understand ourselves and others, such as Ayurveda and the three doshas of Vata, Pitta, and Kapha. As someone who learned she is by dosha kapha vata, I finally had clarity as to why I function optimally by striking a balance between having structure while leaving time to let my mind wander and context switch strategically. If any of the situations involving a perceived lack of motivation or unsustainable motivation resonated with you at the beginning of my speech, I encourage you to further explore the three doshas and seek that inner clarity that you deserve to have in order to uniquely structure your life for a sustainable, consistent stream of motivation for yourself, your customers, your team, and your organization. Thank you so much for your speech, Tiffany. Um, with that, we'll open up the floor for questions. Timer, if you could please set a timer for two minutes and anyone wanna go first. I can kick us off. Um, so Tiffany, as you learn this about yourself, um, what did this enable you to do or what actions did you take to maybe like not change who you are, but like acknowledge that you maybe want to act different in different scenarios? The very first thing that having this understanding into myself really helped me to do, like I mentioned, was I stopped beating myself up for having certain preferences or certain behavioral tendencies. And instead of trying to quote unquote fix myself, I ended up deciding to very intentionally work with the strengths I do have. And as much as I can avoid what I'm not good at, that isn't essential for my job. Great question, by the way. I feel like that is one of those, it's a, It's honestly so much easier said than done, but once that switch turned on in my mind, I, I feel like I really started to fly and just embrace myself and do my best in my role. Um, I have uh, related questions. So now that you have taken the questionnaire and you kind of know which uh, categories you fall into, do you use that as an excuse for behaving a certain way, like, oh, I, this is just inherently how I am, so I can't really help it? That's also a great question. I think 
it can be a very fine line and a very slippery slope as to giving myself grace, but also still making room for continuous improvement, which is another aspect um, and value that's personally really important to me. So I really reflect on not just what the behavior is, but also the context around it. So say I'm, I'm going through a rough time at work, there's a lot going on at work, I tend to cut myself some slack if there is slightly less, fewer things going on at work and there is behavior that I quote unquote should, I use should loosely here, uh, address, I really take ownership over that and make, do my best to make a conscious effort to first uh, be aware of that behavior and be willing to acknowledge that it is something that I need to work on and it is something I will fix over time. Thank you for the question. Thank you. That takes a lot of awareness. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Tiffany, for your speech today. Um, <clears throat> with that, we will be moving into our next section or next section of the agenda, which is table topics. Um, at this time, I'll pass the mic over to Tanya. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. I didn't get a chance at the beginning to explain uh, the goal of table topics, essentially is to challenge us to improve our impromptu speaking skills. So it gives us an opportunity to formulate an answer to a question that I will give you on the spot. I'll ask a question, I'll pause for a few seconds, and then I will pick someone to answer. We are very low on people today, so be prepared. Um, it could be uh, calling on you. You'll have one to two minutes to respond to the question. And uh, today's meeting theme, as you know, is emotional intelligence. And as Shrimai and Tiffany have been uh, telling us about the different aspects of emotional intelligence, self-awareness is, 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 is one of the key ones. And so self-awareness is the ability to identify and understand and relegate, uh, regulate our own emotions. And they lock, unlock the mystery behind our feelings and our moods. And they help us to better respond to people around us. So it's also a secret to finding your happiness. I found a quote from Stephen Covey that actually describes self-awareness perfectly. It did for me anyway. And it involves deep personal honesty and it comes from asking and answering hard questions. So perfect for table topics, I shall say. So let's get started and we can learn from each other. There are no right answers in these questions. They are all personal. So there's nothing tricky about it. Just answer from the heart. Okay, shall we get started? Let me see who's here. All right, uh, my first question, I'm gonna go with Marguerite, and can you tell us when you are at your best? Hmm, when, when I'm at my best, uh, I think when I'm at my best, when uh, I am listening or studying, I'm a very introvert, introverted person and a shy person, which aren't necessarily the same thing. Uh, so, um, I don't necessarily like to be in crowds or talking to a lot of people at once, but I love one-on-one -on -one interactions. So I love listening to people's stories and sort of digging deeper into how they feel about whatever's going on in their lives, whatever we're talking about. So I love listening. Uh, and then, yeah, I, I love researching and studying. Uh, and I love that, part, that aspect of being a product manager because there's always something to learn. Uh, and um, yeah, I think that's uh, that's when I'm at my best is I'm a good studier and a good listener. Very nice. Thank you. See, it's not so bad, you guys. Questions are easy. All right, the next one. How about Aggie? Did I pronounce that right, Aggie? Yes, you did. Okay. If you had a magic wand, how would your life be better in three months? I would say uh, being able to get more rest, get more sleep and exercise. That's something that I'm trying to improve upon. 
on a daily basis, but it's hard balancing it all. So even, you know, maybe taking small tidbits twice a week versus trying to push yourself on a daily basis to let's say run on the treadmill or whatnot. So maybe just incorporating that exercise and rest daily, but in, in mm -hmm. small chunks, five to 10 minutes. Um, and then also just moving ahead in my, in my career. I think that would be, you know, focusing on, on this new role that I obtained and uh, moving forward in, in that space. Very good. All right. Next question. How about Eva, Ava, Eva? Eva. Eva. All right. How do you deal with negative thoughts when they arise? Um, I tend to exercise uh, a lot when I hear or feel negativity. I'm very much like Tiffany in that regard. I am an ex uh, strongman and an ex crossfitter, but I uh, stopped doing that when I got to be in my 40s. Now I just run a lot. Um, so yeah, I tend to just, um, I feel like the more tired I am, I'm kind of like a, a dog in that way. Like, a, you know how they say a tired dog is a happy dog. Like the more tired I am, the less negative I am because all I want to do is sleep or maybe I want to just do something creative. Um, you know, I, I really liked how Marguerite had said that she likes to be uh, creative and she likes to write things down and take time for that. And I am not artistic in the sense where I can draw. I can't even draw a stick man, but I can creative right so a lot of times if I just get a book out and maybe just like do calligraphy or do some writing like that it just helps clear those negative thoughts in my head I think um as women we like to just talk ourselves down a lot and it is very important that we um are proud of who we are so they're just a few of the things I do absolutely I agree I totally agree. And by the way, you're not too old to CrossFit. I'm in my 50s. I CrossFit. Come on. Not too old. <laughs> my knees. I'm sorry. It's my knees. <laughs> I know. Things hurt more at our age, but uh, my age anyway. Um, all right. Next up, I'm going to go with Amy Kirkland. How do you stay grounded when you're feeling overwhelmed? How do I stay grounded when I'm overwhelmed? Um, so the way I try to stay grounded is I try to, to stop and take deep breaths, take, um, try to recenter myself, um, do some yoga, run, um, those kinds of things to try to like um, sort of just recenter on myself and think and just kind of like, I don't know. I'm just saying it again, recenter myself so that I can kind of forget about the things I'm overwhelmed of for a minute and just kind of try to relax and get get more control over my thoughts and my my emotions and and just then and, and then restart. Um additionally, um I was gonna say something. Um I forgot what else I was gonna say. Um yeah, I guess that's, you know, I, I, I know it, I get, I do get overwhelmed easily as I'm sure most people do. So it's, it's something, oh, I was going to say, write things down. Like if I'm, I try to write lists and I've learned a new technique from probably someone in Toastmasters from a speech about like writing specific to do specifics on my to-do list instead of general things, which has been really helpful mm -hmm. to to like get the things down that I'm overwhelmed with. Usually when I'm overwhelmed, I feel like there's too much coming at me and I need to like write everything down and be like, okay, like start with one thing and start crossing things off. So. Nice. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Let's go. Um, Sam, what activities are you doing when you pause and think to yourself, man, time has flown by. That's an interesting question. Thank you for this question. All the other questions that came through, I was 
I knew exactly what I was going to say, but this one is a puzzler. <laughs> That's I always think, the way this works, right? It right. It works that way. Yeah, exactly. I think I'm going to answer this question by talking about the things that I do where I feel like I'm in flow, where time feels like it, it just goes by super quickly. And that's definitely when I'm at work planning, strategizing on how to get things done, getting my to-do list in order, studying, learning, as what has been mentioned before. And when I'm in cross-functional meetings, that is because when I'm in those meetings, they're typically brainstorming or thinking about how to solve a problem. And those discussions are always fun to do if they go well. Sometimes they don't go well. And then, you know, I don't feel that great <laughs> afterwards, but usually at least an hour has gone by, plus all the other work that I'm doing. Um, it makes for an interesting day. That's usually when I feel most in flow. Thank you again for the question. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for the answer. All right, I got, I have a few more. I think we have time. So Sarita, Sarita, what do you do to take time for yourself and reflect? Oh yeah, thanks for the question. A great one, I think. <clears throat> so for me, I always start my day. This is my daily ritual in the morning. Um, I, I tend to not do too much in the, the, the day on the day, but it's probably um, sleep over whatever I'm going through. The following day, uh, I do journal. I also write my gratitude um, because there are sometimes you don't have answers for things have happened. So I just um, I thank for what I have. And um, and also um, to reflect on some of the things that are nagging. Sometimes I take a pause and I kind of, you know, recenter, like uh, I think it was Sam or somebody who was saying recenter. That helps me think um, in uh, a more, I'm also a rationalist and not so emotional, but uh, very pragmatic. So I kind of write down and then reflect on things. What, um, what went well, what did not go well, and what is that I should stop doing and what I should start doing. So like a retro. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Um, I, I know, Laura, you're an evaluator, but I thought maybe you would like this question. Um, I'll give it a shot. OK, so tell us about a time when you took a stand on an issue and didn't back down. So some of us can take a stand and then we get beat down and then we, we you know, that's another topic, but where you actually, you took a stand and you didn't back down, what happened and how did, how did it feel? <laughs> um, that's an excellent question. Um, Amy is probably laughing because she's also a friend outside of this and this is something that I often do. Um, I'm trying to think of like a very specific example of a time I've done this. I would say uh, last week at work, I did this. Uh, the The scenario was we were building a data warehouse. That team is like kind of on a island by themselves. They don't have anybody from product helping them. They don't want anybody from product helping them. Um, I think we've all probably experienced something like that. And the situation was they put out some dashboards with metrics on them and they're measuring the wrong things. Um, so mm. in, in that, what I did as a product leader is talk to the person over the top of that team, express to them that we need to adjust these metrics so that we can make sure that we're measuring the right things that are, the definitions are the same across our teams and that um, the product analysts have the ability to provide support to them and provide guidance for them. Um, the manager pushed back on me, but for me, it's always about making the conversation bigger than everybody else in the room, meaning it wasn't like me against her. It was about us as a business trying to figure out how do we measure our business goals and making sure everyone has access to the same things. So by keeping the conversation about both of our goals, the thing we're both after, we were able to come to an agreement of how to get some support 
for her team, not having my team take it over, but like just helping them partner on those definitions and create alignment um, across each other. But this is an excellent question for me because I do this often, but I would say my, <laughs> me, my main takeaway is like, try to make the conversation about something larger than the both of you. So you're not fighting with each other. Thank you for this question. Very cool. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. All right, I'll do one more. If you guys don't mind. I have lists, we got time. So um, how about Rosie? I know your table topics are the uh, Toastmaster, but what motivates you to make progress? So Tiffany did a whole thing about motivation. So what, what motivates our president to, to make progress? Honestly, crossing things off. I don't know why, but since high school, I found out that if I make a list and I cross things off, that simple like, and it has to be on paper or on a whiteboard. I realized like on an iPad or online, like on Asana, it's not the same satisfaction. And so um, for me, like what motivates me is to one, when I'm feeling overwhelmed to go back and like figure out my priorities. So whether it's in my personal or work life, take everything down. And then I organize everything by like the P system, the P0 to P4. Um, and then based on what I think is the most pressing thing, then I'll, then I'll do that. And then it's essentially like a checklist, but I have like my never, never P4 is like the things that someday would be nice to accomplish, but like, like, you know, probably go through my clothes and sort it out. That's a P4 where it's not crucial, but it's something I want to do. And then once you get there and like you start crossing things off, I think that act just continuously motivates me. And as I see my checklist get, get like smaller and smaller, um, I keep going. And it's the same thing in the workplace, like understanding that and looking at it. So if a sauna could make or whatever checklist system out there could make like a paper version, I'd be on board. <laughs> awesome. That's true. I love checking things off. It feels so good. Yeah. Thank you, Rosie. All right, I think I'm done. Back to you, Madam Toastmaster, Rosie. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Tanya, for the table topics. Oh, and, very welcome. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm going to pass it over to our general evaluator, Kashmira. Um, you have the floor. Thank you. Um, so let's see how do I do this. Um, so my, I think the meeting overall went really well and everyone was super engaged. Um, everyone got a chance to speak with table topics in the, I really loved the word of the day in trust um, because it was, because I feel like trust is a huge factor of emotions um, if there's trust. Whether there's trust or not may make the emotional uh, spectrum, uh, or rather, would may have you fall anywhere on the emotional spectrum. From uh, trust is just a huge deal. So that was a perfectly fitting day for the for this theme uh, uh, word for this theme. Um, overall, I think all the roles where everyone did what they were expected to, um, just based on the guidelines provided. The speeches were on point. Um, one thing I, oh, I was supposed to ask this, sorry. I was supposed to ask the speech evaluators to go first, right? Yeah, but you can continue with yours <laughs> um, and then go back afterwards. Um, I, would, I was actually going to talk about the speeches, so I, I will, hand off to Amy for the first speech. Sorry about that. Okay, no worries, Kashmir. I will go ahead and do my evaluation here. Give me just a second. Okay. Shreemaya, what a great speech. I really enjoyed it. I thought you did a really great job of um, talking about um, all the different factors about emotional intelligence and really explaining things and, and giving us some really great information. Um, 
I thought your opening was really good. I thought you got our attention by having us um, think about our own experience. Um, you had good, uh, good, good vocal clarity. You were clear and concise. Had a really good structure and flow of your of your speech. Um, I thought it it flowed very nicely. Um, I liked your story that you told. I thought it was a good example. I thought that you could have maybe done a little bit more with that and um, kind of even showed some more emotion when you were when you were telling that story and kind of like making us feel a little bit more of like how you were um, how you were feeling at the time and like how you know frustrated and angry you were and and um, I also thought it might be interesting to maybe put that story at the beginning and kind of like open that up as a, as a, um, I, I'm not saying that like you could go either way really, but I think that might be an interesting way to, to um, sort of grab our attention as well as kind of tell the story first and then use the, use the, um, the points that you're making to tie back to the story. Um, but overall, I think, um, I think I think the the placement was fine too. So don't get me wrong there. I think it could go either way. I think that's just another idea. Um, but again, you know, adding some more of the emotion to it, I think it really would have um, helped kind of bring out the story and, and um, added some um, some some dimension to it. Um, I liked your use of hand gestures and how and you were really good at like putting them up, putting your hands up so that we could see with the camera. That's always hard <laughs> to do. Um, Let's see. I um, you had generally had good eye contact, but I noticed your eyes were kind of um, up and around a little bit. I'm not sure if you were looking for notes or if you were just thinking or whatever. Um, it wasn't terribly distracting or anything, but it just, just as I was kind of watching all the things, that was one thing I noticed. Um, and um, I was thinking about because you did have so many points and you were talking about a, a um you know a specific topic emotional intelligence that slides might have been uh, a couple slides might have been good to have to be able to point those out because especially when you're like counting off different things being able to tell the audience see and kind of keep track of what you're talking about not 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 it's not necessary but i i thought that might have been a good addition in this type of speech uh, and I thought your closing was really good, although you kind of stumbled a little bit. I think you're trying to maybe forgot what you were trying to to close That's with, whatever. But then I also like that you you kind of closed it out with here's the book and the information and stuff of where you got the or where you sorry what the the book that you were talking about. So um, overall, I think it was a really great speech, and I really enjoyed it. And and thank you. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for that <clears throat> the feedback, Amy. And uh, definitely everything um, that you said is valid about the, my eyes, you know, not sometimes <laughs> pulling away uh, because I was afraid of that too. But yeah, definitely very, very <laughs> helpful. And uh, I was debating the placement of the story myself too. <laughs> um, should I start with that? But yeah, definitely. Thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, you evaluating. I'm going to mm -hmm. watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, next, I call upon Lori for evaluating Tiffany's speech. Thank you, Madam General Evaluator. And I'll give Amy a minute to pin everyone. Yeah, fine. <laughs> Pinning people is hard, so I totally, I totally know. <laughs> All right, Tiffany, what a great speech today. I learned many new things and also was reflecting on myself during your presentation. So thank you for that. Um, I realize that I need to entrust in my inner Veda maybe a little bit more because I'm definitely the person that gets anxiety, but with my to-do list similar to Rosie, I'm able to, to manage it. But today in your speech, it was great to have those three kind of definitions of each character. Is that what we call them? Um, character that you might channel to just understand yourself a little bit better. So I think in your speech, you did a great job of defining those three characters first. So we could clearly understand 
who they were, what you were what you were referencing as you went throughout your speech. So that was awesome. Um, your questions at the beginning really grabbed all of our attention. I was one of those people who were like, yep, definitely done that. Oh, yeah, that one's me too. So your questions really brought us in and got us to start thinking about how we react in some of these situations and these different situations that we um, encounter for ourselves. Um, also, your hand gestures, I know for this speech in particular, you were focused on hand gestures and vocal variety. You did a great job keeping your hands in the frame and then using them to enhance your talking points as you went. The one thing that I, I find hard is like what to do with your hands when you're not using them. Um, so you kind of kept them here. Um, it is a very challenging thing, but you did a great job with your hands in the frame. They were actually in the frame the whole time. So good job with that. Maybe next time it's like practicing where to awkwardly put your hands when you're not using them. Um, I'm going to challenge you to do that because I know you can you can overcome that. Uh, I'm just checking my notes. Uh, your slides in particular, you did a great job putting images on them that really reflect the character that you were describing. I found myself, I found myself looking at the images more than the words on your slide. So even something as simple as that is like just the image and then talking through the words might make your slides even better. But I did find that that was very impactful to have something representing so you could kind of get an image of like what that character looks like and see yourself within that character um, as well. So great job doing that. Um, also, I know we don't usually evaluate on this, but I'm going to throw this out there anyways. You did a fantastic job answering the questions after your speech. Um, that can be challenging when you're on the spot, but you did a great job answering them. And I didn't catch too many filler words, so you had very clear answers and impactful answers to those questions as well. So great job there. A couple of things that I think you can continue to improve upon is one, I could kind of tell maybe you don't use Zoom all that often. I don't know, but practice makes perfect, right? That's why we're here is practicing and learning Zoom and how all the different controls are work. Um, I also noticed that you use the slides as your background, maybe for the first time, which was great in terms of like being on the other side in the audience. Um, but there is a mechanism that you can make yourself a little bit bigger. So something to play around with um, because you were kind of small in the screen. And I think you can make yourself a little bit larger, um, but that is totally nitty gritty type of feedback. And then the last thing I would challenge you to do is since we were talking about emotional intelligence today, I think you could bring a little bit more emotion to those characters you were describing. So when you were describing somebody with anxiety, like make us feel more anxious, right? Or the person that's angry with fire, give a little more emotion in terms of that character. It would just help bring them to life a little bit more. But you did a great job. It was a fantastic speech. I have your slides up and I'm reading through them and I'm probably gonna talk about them all week and criticize myself a little bit on them. So thank you for this presentation. And um, that is all I have today. So back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you so much, Lori. I, I had a really fun time writing this, the speech and also creating the slide deck. So really appreciate all your feedback. Thank you. Thank you, Lori and Tiffany. Next, we have the grammarian report from Sam. Thank you, General Evaluator. Really great meeting for good grammar usage a lot of things that i could mention but i'm high level going to speak to some of the themes that were discussed today being centered when the time flies by studying and learning a lot of very good handoffs as well during this meeting this crosses into general evaluation but Really appreciated how everyone on the call said thank you when folks were being handed off and treated those transitions as a part of their answer or whatever role that they were taking. Uh, great transitions. No significant notes on poor usage of grammar. For the word of the day, raise your hand if I don't call you out, but shout out to Lori and Kashmira for explicitly using the word of the day, but if you did, I apologize if I didn't catch you. Um, great meeting.
if there are any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank Back you, to you Sam. general evaluator. Next, we have uh, the timer, Jennifer. Hey there. All right, so we did pretty well on timing. So the, I'll start with the speeches, the prepared speeches first. So Srimai, you went a little bit over at seven minutes, 39. Tiffany, you also went a little bit over at seven minutes and 11 seconds. I'll skip to table topics. We had a number of them. Um, if you remember the table topics was at a minimum of one minute, maximum of two minutes. So um, I think the first person was, was it Mai? It might've been Mai. Anyway, it was one minute and two seconds. Aggie was at 42 seconds. Eva was at one minute, 29. Amy was one minute, 30. Sam, you were at one minute, 20. Saritha, you were at one minute and nine seconds. Lori, you were, at, you were cutting it close at one minute and 56 seconds. And Rosie, you were at one minute and 25 seconds. For evaluators, um, let's see, Amy, uh, you were at three minutes, 32 seconds, just a little bit over. And then Lori, you were a whole minute over at four minutes and six seconds. Oh, I'm sorry. Evaluations top out at three minutes and 30. So you were uh, 30 seconds over. All right. That's my timer report. Back to you, Madam uh, General Evaluator. Thank you, Jennifer. And yep. over to... Marguerite, uh, for the number of us and ums and fillers. Thank you, Kashmir. Uh, so for Amy, I counted uh, five plus ums and three likes. Rosie, one ah, uh, five plus ums and one other. Lori, two ahs, uh, five plus ums and one like. Tiffany, I only got one um. Awesome. Good job. To Jennifer, uh, just two ums that I caught. Uh, Kashmira, one ah, three ums. Uh, Shrimai, a few ahs, uh, four ums, one so, and uh, one you know. And for Sam, I got one um. Aggie, one ah. For myself, <laughs> I tried to to do myself, I think I got one on, I probably had five plus ons too, uh, just a guess, uh, but probably an educated guess. Uh, Tanya, two ahs, one so, and one you know. Ava, one, uh, three ahs, one you know. And Sarita, uh, one ah, and four ums. And that is my all counter report. Uh, back to you, Kashmir. Thank you. Um, so I will present the general evaluation all over again. Um, so the meeting started on time. Everybody did a great job with their roles. Um, and I think what I would like to point out at this point was what I noticed um, about the topic itself. Um, both the speeches were on point. Um, both were tackling different applications of the concept and rounding out with how to apply it to work as a PM. So that was really interesting to see like where one was um, talking about um, just um, what what they what what Shrimai, what she got out of the book that she was reading and how she applied it and how she accepted feedback, et cetera. And the other one where um, it was more about how do you, what, what kind of character you are and how to how to make the most out of it. Um, and this has been already been said before in the evaluations, but I'll, I'll just put in my own color to it that I noticed that the speeches by virtue of being prepared and practiced were a bit lacking in emotion. Um, because after all, we don't always practice emotions that just comes on the spot. So maybe we can for the future speeches, because uh, just having putting emotions and, and tonal variety and an emotional uh, variety on their facial expressions, that's something that really engages uh, audiences. Um, and I also noticed that both speakers had a lot more emotions when answering the questions after. So it was, I, and I think that's just because those were not, that those were more impromptu and not practiced. 
Um, one other thing I would have liked to see um, in answers to table topics as well as in maybe in the speeches was how people react to other people's emotions or rather if somebody is really mad at you, how do you not just internal uh, manage it, your own emotions, but also how do you deal with helping others manage their emotions in this in the moment? Because that's also a very important aspect of emotional intelligence. I guess we we understand what they're feeling, but what do we do with that understanding? Um, so th that would have really rounded out um, this this session. And I think that's basically everything from me. And so back to you, Madam Toastmaster. Thank you. Awesome, thank you so much for the evaluation and for running through all the evaluations. Uh, for now, we're going to pass it over to our vote counter. Um, Eva, you have the floor. Okay, well, thank you for entrusting me, see what I did there, with being the vote counter. And everybody give a warm clap to Lori, who got six votes today. Way to go, girl. Perfect. Awesome. Well, congratulations, Lori. Um, and thank you, Eva, for the vote counter report. Um, with that, I'm going to pass it over to our VPE. Uh, she has some pathways announcements she'd like to share. Perfect. And Marguerite, you have the floor. Hello. Uh, actually, today, so I think everyone actually is everyone who's on this call is good with pathways. So thank you very much. <laughs> uh, that's awesome to see. Uh, and I wanted to call out that you probably got a new invitation for our biweekly meetings. So if you didn't get it, please let me know. Or if you have any problems with it, please let me know. And the other, the old calendar invite should have been uh, removed, deleted from your calendar. So if you have any questions about that or uh, any questions about that, let me know. And for looking ahead to our next meeting, uh, the topic is project in, I believe, yeah, uh, product, product management versus product, project man management. Uh, and we are looking for uh, some roles to be filled. So that, I just put the link in the chat for the meeting roles to, see, to show you what's available. Uh, over the next for the next few meetings and Shumai will be our Toastmaster on August 28th. Thank you, Shumai. And for and I ask you to please sign up for roles for the next meeting and beyond. So the second link I put in there goes to our meeting, our uh, role sign up form. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you. That's it for my lessons for today. Perfect. And now I'm gonna pass the mic over to our Sergeant of Arms, Amy, to close us off. Thanks, Rosie. Thanks everyone for a great meeting. I enjoyed learning all about emotional intelligence today from everyone and it's just such a great meeting. So I will stop the recording and we will be adjourned.